Welcome to the App or Not to App podcast with the app man, Jeremy Callahan, where we talk about why apps are not a luxury item and are essential to your business success. I've been in the mobile industry for over 20 years, and the question I always get is to app or not to app. Definitely, you must app. Mobile apps can help your business reduce costs, increase leads, and reduce manpower. An app is not a luxury item. It's a necessity. So let's get started making you money. Okay, welcome to the show this week. Got a great topic and it's called prototyping. Why it's the most important step in development, app development. Any project you have out there, really the most important step you can take is prototyping. And basically what prototyping is, is we're just going to take a, an idea we have and we're going to figure out a way that we can put it in, in front of somebody and that they can test it. So we're talking mobile apps today and why they're essential to your business. And a lot of people call me up and when they call me up, they always want to know what's the first thing I can do related to my mobile app project. And so that's a real simple answer. It's to prototype no matter who you are. Now you could, you could hire a person like me or another developer to help you prototype, or you could do it yourself. So I'm just going to teach you the techniques to do it yourself today. And if you would like to consult with me, set up a free time to consult with me on my website, jeremycallahan.com. But otherwise, let's just talk about prototyping. And it, you know, it's, it's generally, we'll just talk about some high level stuff at the top. And then I'm going to talk about um, how to create avatars. So we want to create a, a customer avatar. That's a customer that we're actually going to develop the prototype for. So we have a customer in mind before we just go out and program what we think everybody needs. Um, then we're going to do some design thinking. Design thinking, it's kind of a five-step process. I'm only going to focus on two of the steps which are um, defining the problem and then how to ide uh, ideation, how to go through it with your team. Then we're going to talk about user experience. When we talk about user experience, that's just basically the flow of how people, from the minute they open the app to when they register to when they pay, they get to the dashboard and they do some other action. So that's the user experience. And then finally, at the end of the show, I'm going to show you Ionic Creator, which is hands down the best tool for prototyping apps. Um, it is a tool that will allow us to drag and drop. You don't need any programming experience. And then the best part about it is, is I could send the link to you and you could open it up on your phone. So really powerful. And if you are just listening to this podcast, you can go to my YouTube channel or my video, um, or excuse me, my, my blog on jeremycallahan.com and this video will be posted there. So there's a video with this. I'm gonna share my screen with, um, especially when we get to Ionic Creator at the end, you'll want to check that out. So as far as a prototype goes, we wanna keep three main things in mind. Um, it defines, <clears throat> excuse me, it defines the exact person and customer that's going to use the app, okay? That's the first thing. We gotta define the exact person that's gonna use it. And then we have to figure out how we can create a product, in this case, an app, that's going to get to that person. And then finally, how we can validate some sort of idea, right? So we don't want to just build, we, we kind of want to come up with an idea of a person that has a problem and then how we can solve that problem. And then when we actually get the app out to the person, we can test if it actually solved that problem. So it's kind of a real working real life example of how to actually put a product out there and test it before we've gone down the road of development. Just to back up a little bit, the way my development process works is I want to prototype something before I actually, a lot of people say, how much does it cost? So, well, for a prototype, for my prototyping services, $6,500. I come to your office, I learn your process, I learn all the business stakeholders, I work with everybody to find out exactly what they need. I do everything I'm going to do here, and then I create a prototype. That's $6,500. After that, I can basically tell you how much it's going to cost to actually build that same app out to do all the programming behind it. See, it's very difficult for a developer to estimate a project without knowing what they're going to build first. It'd be like saying, uh, 
how much does it cost to remodel my, my home? But I don't tell you how many bedrooms I want to add, if it's a kitchen, if it's a bathroom. I just want, you know, so with estimating, we go out and actually provide a service to you, create the prototype, test the prototype. It's actually something that you can use, give you an estimate, and then you can shop that estimate around or you can use us. We're very confident in our abilities to create great prototypes and you would love to work with us. So that's basically how it goes. Okay, so kind of at the end of this podcast, um, you're gonna be basically be able to create a full working prototype. Free, free, okay? It's 100% free. Of course, unless you hire me to do it, then you gotta pay $6,500. But if you wanna do this process yourself, this is something you can totally learn to do yourself. And I'm actually creating an ebook, <clears throat> excuse me, an ebook on this very subject. It's gonna be free as well. So let's talk about the MVP. That is the minimum viable product. So get this in your head to begin with is that we can't build everything under the sun the first time out of the gate. What we can do and the more, you know, pragmatic approach to it is to go in, figure out something we can build that solves a customer problem, very minimal. And then after that, if, if we determine that, that problem was solved, then we solve the next problem and the next problem. So we start, we crawl before we walk. Is, is a good way to put it. Crawl before we walk. Um, cool, so, you know, and, and some of the things you really wanna do before you create your prototype is just answer some of these questions. I'm just gonna read some. I, th this is like 11 questions that I have for everybody, and I'll just read through a few of them. Question number one, what exactly do you want your app prototype to, to demonstrate, right? Um, number two, who in your organization needs to be involved with planning? Is that sales? Is that marketing? Is that IT? Um, once you determine all the people that need to be involved, set up the meeting immediately. Get all those people, get them on the calendar. And I'll tell you what to meet with them, but get them on the calendar now because you know how people are. Who's using the app? Who's the ideal customer? These are just some general questions. How many different users do you have? Uh, think of like Uber, right? Uber has drivers. They also have riders. They probably also have people in the office, like customer support people. So think of all the people in different user scenarios that you're going to have. Um, what are your assumptions about people who will use your app, right? Who, who's going to use it? What are your assumptions about them? Are they old? Are they young? Are they male? Are they female? Do they have jobs? Are they unemployed, right? What are your assumptions about them now? Um, can we validate any of those assumptions now before, before we start testing, before we do anything? Like, is there a way that we could just validate that, I don't know, that all women love to shop for shoes? Is there any data out there that would back that up? Something like that. Okay, hard question. Can we get a working prototype up and in somebody's hands within two weeks? That's a, that's a yes every time. If you answer no to that, you are beyond the scope of an MVP. So you really need to scale back what you're doing. Do you have an app? Do you have a budget for your project already? Just keep something to keep in mind. If you have a, you know, a million dollar budget, your MVP could be very extensive. If you have a $200 budget, very small. Um, just some questions out there. What are the other ones? How will the app work within your existing technical framework? So if you have a company, that's a very important question. Can, you, can your technical, current technical situation even support the app you want to build? And will you develop it with your existing team or a team outside of your organization? So these are just some of the questions you want to ask kind of upfront, kind of generally frame things. So now let's talk about Kind of that, that thing, that, the next thing I talked about is we always want to have a customer in mind before we actually start building something. And to do that, what we have are we have these things called customer avatars. And I'll just kind of show you one. Okay. If you, if you see the screen right now, um, it's a little hard to see, but this is a customer avatar for, a, um, for Safeway, which is a shopping grocery store and they were doing some work on their app and so they came up with um, all these personalities and I just grabbed this one. This is the controller, 
resourceful, organized, using multiple tools and methods to stay flexible, right? So this is one of the personas. I actually created a lot of these personas. I forget, there must have been at least 20 of them. Here's a little bit more detail about this person, the controller. I'm responsible for what people eat. I'm not just feeding them, I'm teaching them about food. So this is a person that they've really, it's the controller, right? <laughs> To put it to put it bluntly, and then so um, they have they actually have some examples here. If you look down, right around where my hand is now, these are actually customers. These are actually people like that they went out and interviewed. So they did some customer interviews before, and you could do this within your organization as well. And then finally, they kind of come to this last slide, and it's a little hard to see, but you know it's the controller, um, and it has these things about them, um, what they love what they hate, uh, and then the, these expectations that they have. Their expectations are they're clear, they're informative, they're transparent, they're consistent, they're consultative. Consultative? It's a weird word. Uh, <laughs> that's a bizarre word, actually. Con consultative. So this is a person that's a controller, and so they've identified it. So what you need to do within your organization and kind of with your idea for your app is come up with avatars. So like I was talking about Uber earlier, they have a rider, right? That's not really an avatar. A rider is just a person that rides in a car. What, who's the ideal customer? And the reason that we want to talk about your ideal customer is because everything you do from this point forward is about your ideal customer. When you actually have an app and you market to that person, the first thing the marketing person that's going to help you with marketing is going to say is, who's my ideal customer? You know, what do they do? What do they like to do? How much money do they make? Where do they work? Um, how old are they? These are the kinds of things that you need to identify now. So by identifying at the very beginning and creating these avatars of all the types of people that will use your product, you're going to be able to use this down the road. Advertisements, emails, uh, mainly, mainly advertising. You know, but you're going to really want to know, you know, when you create like a design for your app, you want it to design and to reflect to your ideal customer. You want to talk to that person directly. You want your messaging to be directly to that person. So you need to define this person up front and it's more than one person. It's usually several people, um, for like the shopping one, I was talking about the, the grocery store, they probably have 20 different personality types that they were building towards or looking towards. So those are avatars. So you need to create your avatars and um, go with that. Now, once you have the avatars, um, the, other, the, other, the other thing I want to say, just one more thing about avatars, I don't want to gloss over it, is you want to do this with empathy. So you want to actually put yourself in the role of the person. Instead of just saying like, I bet you all moms have a problem with this, whatever it is, right? Well, as you can see and hear, I'm not a woman. So what do I know about a mom and having her problems? So I need to empathize with that person. You know, what do moms, there's a lot of moms out there, like different types of moms, right? Like some uh, come from wealthy neighborhoods, some are on food stamps, right? So how do we empathize with somebody that's um, maybe on food stamps versus a person that has a nanny. And you know, which customer is ours? If we're, maybe we're a, a discount supermarket. So that's kind of our target, the, the mom that's on food stamps, that's struggling to get by. You know, how do they feel when they get home from work? They're tired, they're worn out, they don't have a lot of time, right? right? So now I'm starting to feel like that person, right? I'm like, I'm empathizing with that person. I'm like, damn, that must, that must be a tough life. Have a couple kids and, you know, have to work all day. Wow. So keep that in mind when you're creating your avatars as well. Okay, the next section is about um, design thinking. And again, today's the topic. Today's topic is prototyping and why it's the most important step in app development. I would even take that beyond to say any project you're developing, prototyping and finding out who your customer are and, and then... This next section, define think, uh, design thinking. So design thinking has kind of five parts. It's one kind of find that customer and then 
I'm going to talk about two and three right now. Um, well, I'll just tell you all. One is um, finding that ideal customer and empathizing with them. And then two is defining a product, uh, defining a, a problem. Number three is ideation, coming up with ideas to help that person. Number four is prototyping, which is what this entire podcast is about today. And then number five is testing. So for this section, we'll just talk about design thinking and we're going to talk about defining a problem and then ideation. So the, the thing you want to do here is, again, I told you to kind of figure out who those stakeholders are within your organization, marketing, sales, IT, and then get those people all in a room for a meeting. And then the goal of that meeting is to, one, define the problem. So you have those avatars. What's a specific problem that those customers have, that they all have? And, and then, you know, how do we solve it? So the, but the most important thing with, with this kind of defining a problem, we just don't want to say like 5% of the teenagers out there or 25% of the teenagers out there don't eat enough vegetables. Like that's kind of a blanket statement, right? So a better question would be like, how do we get teenagers to eat better or eat more healthy? How do we get teenagers to eat a more healthy diet? Now, the first question is, you know, 25% of the teenagers don't eat good enough. That doesn't really spark any ideas with me, right? But when I say, how do we get teens to eat a more healthy diet? I start thinking about things. I start going, well, I don't know. What if we put fruit in front of them? What if we, you know, replace the Flaming Hot Cheetos with, okay, you can't replace Flaming Hot Cheetos, right? Come on. Or Gatorade. It's like, what teenagers don't like this? But anyways, you see what I'm saying, where we asked, because we framed a better question when we defined the problem, we, we framed a better question. So now when we kind of get to this next phase, which is creating ideas, now ideas start to come to us a little bit easier. So we're focused on outcomes instead of focusing on, you know, a general problem. Everybody's got a problem, but how can we define a question that leads us to an answer is, is what we're trying to do here. So... With ideation, there's a ton of things you can do. Um, but again, we want everybody in a room, right? And then the, the first thing you do on some of these is, um, one is we get all the stakeholders into the room that we need. We have a specific customer avatar and we have a specific problem. I have trouble with that word, specific problem. So now what we wanna do is create ideas. So it's just a free flowing idea session, right? Um, you don't want to be a jerk in this meeting. People are going to come up with really dumb ideas. That's okay. That's kind of the point of it, actually. Like some ideas will be good. Some ideas will be completely horrible. But the nice part about a horrible idea is you can kind of have some fun with it. You know, we can, we can razz people a little bit. But those, because we want to loosen the mood, right? We want to have a loose mood in this meeting. We don't want people being uptight and afraid to give their ideas or their opinion or something like that. So here's just a couple of three ideas that you could do that will uh, help your idea, ideation process. And you can Google uh, like design thinking ideation ideas, Ooh, ideation ideas. And by doing that, you'll come up with some things. So the general idea is everybody's in our room right now. We give everybody a stack of post-its and a pen. And then the first one we're going to do, um, we could call it hopes and fears. So on the wall, all we're gonna do is draw a line, a vertical line. On one side, we have hopes, the word hopes at the top, and on the other side, we have fears. And then we give everybody in the room like 10 minutes. You say, okay, you got 10 minutes, write a note on your post-it, and it's either a hope, I hope this app can do this to solve a problem. That's kind of general, but I'm like, I hope I could, let's say grocery shop, I hope I could shop for groceries in under 10 minutes online or through the app. Right? That's a hope. Fear is that I mean, the app won't work correctly when I'm on the bus. Whatever, whatever they are, right? And then those are just two I have right now. And so for 10 minutes, everybody comes up with ideas and we walk up and we actually stick them on the wall. All the hopes on one side, all the fears on the other side. And I can put up as many as I want. Everybody in the room can put up as many as they want. And then once that you know, 10 minute time period is up. 
we have kind of a leader of the meeting and the leader just goes through and reads them all out loud and kind of groups them together. And then by doing that, we can kind of start to form ideas around how to solve a specific problem. And that's design thinking right there. We could use the same process with the post-it notes and a whiteboard, and we could do just a simple brainstorm. We just do a flat out brainstorm, put your ideas up there, right? A brainstorm question though is just a little bit more general. So you never know what you're gonna come up with, but that's a way. And then the third way that you should always do, you know, whether you have 10 ways or one is, is the worst possible ideas where everybody just puts up the worst ideas they have. Pie in the sky ideas, things that are way too big to accomplish, things that are just bad ideas. Because again, we wanna kinda keep that room nice and loose and the ideas flowing. So by doing that, we're just saying, eh, we'll make a joke. What if we did this? And it, it's interesting because every time we do it, there's always kind of like, somebody says something that's completely ridiculous and it becomes kind of the running joke throughout the meeting. But it, it's fun because it keeps everybody working together. So those are the three so far. So we have um, kind of that prototype questionnaire, right? Again, prototyping the most important step in app development. And uh, the first thing we did was just talk about MVP and kind of those questions of what we're going to do with the prototype. And then we followed up with, you know, who are our customer avatars. Now we've done some design thinking where we've actually pulled everybody in a room and we've defined a problem and we've created an idea. So now we have a problem and we have an idea of how we're going to do it. So now we just go right into user experience. And what is user experience? Well, again, user experience is just how people are going to function with your app from the minute they open it up to register until they get to the end of that app and how they deal with it on a regular basis. So one of the things that, I mean, you, you could do this so simply, you could say, you know, boom, user comes to the splash page. I'm putting post-its on the wall, by the way. So these are just post-its and I put them side by side and they're kind of uh, in order. So the first, so I just will put a post-it and on the post-it I wrote the word splash. And then the next post it over, I write register. And then I write dashboard. So you could have all these kind of post-its that you just basically create a flow through your app. Or you could just take and draw squares on a page. Squares on a page. I was just talking to a girl today. Her name's Debbie. She has an idea for an app. She said, what's the next step? I have this, I have that. I can do all these things. I said, draw squares on a page or a PowerPoint, and the first square is splash screen, second square, register, third square, upsell, fourth square, share with your friends, like, and, and create all the squares that you need for your project. So you can just see how people use it. And these are simple, right? This is, this is like post-its and drawing squares on a page. Let me show you this if you look at my screen right now. This is, here is a first time user. This is a little bit more, um, can we zoom this? Yeah, look at that. So here is one I created for, sorry, I'm just zooming. Well, anyway, here's one I created for a, a, mobile, a mobile app related to golf. And you can just kind of see these, these photos here, like right here on the, um, where I'm pointing now, is the payment screen. After they pay, we actually search for people. And then we, um, oh, excuse me, I'm going the wrong direction. So here, here it is, it's, uh, this screen right here is invite your friends. If they actually click to invite their friends, we have a message that they could actually text message. This is the next screen. The next screen says find a professional, right? And if they click find a pro, then we have a loading screen. After the loading screen, we ask them for payment. And this is how you kind of do it. You just flow through from top to bottom. Now this again is a little bit more complex because I actually took these and created it on a fireworks document, which is like a Photoshop document. And I have the screens and their styling that goes along with these screens as well. You don't need to do anything this complicated. Again, I'm, I'm just saying squares on a page. I'm just showing you this so that you can get an idea of of how you need to draw out all the screens for your app, okay? Because we wanna know how people flow through. And so that 
And then here's another one. This one is for kind of the same thing, but this one's an invited user. So I created a user flow for just a regular user that finds us in the app store. And then during that process, they can invite their friends. So here's, here's what it looks like if they invite somebody. An invited user has a slightly different uh, flow in and out of the app. And then where's the final one? Here's one for the, the golf professional. So if the golf professional signs up, again, it's like Uber. We have a driver. When they sign up, it's completely different than when a rider signs up. So when the golf professional signs up, they actually put their bank account in there so they can get paid. Everybody else has to pay. These guys get paid. So you can see kind of the different flows that are going on, the different user types, and you have to create flows of of how to get in and out and through your app for each one of these people. And now we get to the best part of the podcast. Drum roll, please. How to actually do this, how to actually create it, right? So you guys have all the steps in there now. You know all the four parts you need to do to get to the actual prototyping. Again, proper planning prevents piss poor performance. So I've given you four steps of planning and now we will actually execute. And the way we do that is through a web utility. Again, I'm sharing my screen. This is called Ionic Creator. Ooh. Ionic Creator is a drag and drop utility. You can sign up and get a free account. You can get one free account if you wanna do multiple um, apps and flows. It's $29 a month. And this is what it looks like. In the middle, there's the phone on the Left-hand side of the screen, you're right. It's hard to see, but there's all these buttons over here. And so what this is, is when you create a page on here, and let's just do one. Let's just say add a page and a blank page, and that's it. It's just blank in the middle, right? And then over here, there's all these elements that we could add. For instance, we could add a button. If we add the button there, it says tap me, and then we can come over here on the right-hand side and we can actually change that out and make it say submit. And we can do a number of things here. Here's some list views. If we want to drag something in to create an item view with a list, an item view with an icon, and we can start to program our app. We can add colors to it. We can add buttons. If I want to make this submit button right here, go to a different page, I can link it to different pages. And so this is it. Anybody can do this. Drag and drop. I can type. It's, it's very simple to do, and it's made for non-coders. It's made for business people. It's made for anybody to do. So I'll just show you. And then how do we do this here? Let's go sign up. Okay. So right here at the very top, there's this little eyeball icon. And if I click that, it's actually going to load it and show you what it looks like in a mobile phone. A little hard to see on the screen, but you can see it. And so this first step, it says create an account, first name, last name, email, password, phone number, and then the continue button. If we click the continue button, woo, look at that. We went to the next page. Woo, look at, look at, look at. If we click next, it goes to the next page. It says invite your friends. Uh, wanna invite a friend? Yeah, let's invite a friend. And then, then it says, oh, how do you wanna do it? Well, let's invite them by Facebook. Okay, and then it says, congratulations, you know. Uh, I'll come back later. So anyways, this is it. This is how you can actually create prototypes, click through mobile apps. Again, prototyping is the most important step, really in any project, whether it's web, uh, if you're creating a hard product like, like this tripod or a mobile app. You wanna prototype it. You wanna get something in front of people. And again, those four steps, you know, why it's the most important, you know, know your limitations at the beginning, know you're making that MVP, know what you're trying to test, right? Because after we create this prototype right here, we want to give it to people and we want them to test our assumption. Our assumption that we found through creating customer avatars that we did in design thinking, we had empathy when we thought of the user and how, who we were helping, we created user experience documents, and now we actually have a fully functioning prototype. So that's the show for today. Hope you found good value in it. If you do want to create a prototype or need help creating a prototype, reach out to me, jeremycallahan.com. My contact information is there. My phone number is there. You can book a 
consultation with me from the website, a 15 minute consultation with me. And if you like the podcast, please share it with everybody you know, subscribe, share, appreciate you being here. Good night.